Hello, and welcome back to our kitchen. Today we are making gluten-free apple crisp. Um, it's a really easy recipe. We're actually altering the recipe that's on King Arthur Flowers' website to have a few less ingredients and make it a little bit more kid-friendly. So to start off, we've washed our hands, we've cleaned our area, and we are ready to get going. So, we have four diced apples. We diced these up pretty thick and we've left the skins on. We chose to left, leave the skins on because the skin includes something called pectin. And this helps to thicken up the apple mixture as it bakes. So it's gonna be kind of nice and delicious. Um, and it's not gonna get too runny. So to start out, we are going to take our apples and we're gonna season them. We're going to get some brown sugar and some allspice and we're gonna mix that together. So Ridge, we've got one quarter cup. We're gonna take our brown sugar here and we're going to pack it in. So can you help me push that wee down with your fingers? We can make sure we have nice clean hands. Beautiful. All right, go ahead and let go. Nice. So we're getting a nice firmly packed cup. You can go ahead and put that in. This is one of my favorite things to measure out because it always reminds me of playing with sand as a kid, making sand castles. Nice job, Rich. You can go ahead and start mixing. After we add in the brown sugar, we're going to add one tablespoon of allspice. If you don't have allspice, you can mix together some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and some ginger. And we're gonna put that right on top of our apples. Nice job. So we're gonna try to get these nicely coated. So we wanna kinda of work from the outside in. We want to just sort of stir everything together and we're gonna make these apples sort of like they're cinnamon coated apples. Nice job, go ahead and keep going, Rich. In the meantime, while Ridge is stirring, I am going to prepare our pan. There's not really much we need to do in order to get ready for this, but you need to talk about what kind of pan you want to use. We're gonna use a regular pie pan today. The other option is to use individual little pans, um, little pie pans, either one is fine. I have also made this recipe in a square, like nine by nine brownie pan, and it turns out wonderfully that way too. So once we have the apples all mixed together, we're gonna to just put them right into our pie pan here. Don't worry if it looks like it's a lot of apples. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yes, Rich? Um, can you eat that by itself? Can you eat this right now by itself? Absolutely. You can absolutely have one. And since we're baking this for just us, I'm gonna let Rich have a, have a little try. What do you think? <laughs> Delicious! It has the Ridge stamp of approval. So we're gonna pack these apples down. We're gonna get them all set and ready and we're gonna set this off to the side. We are now going to make our gluten-free topping. We're gonna to use the exact same bowl that we used before. Make sure that there's no apples in there. And we're going to measure out some sugar, some oats and some flour to start with. This is really easy because we're doing one cup of each. We're gonna start with our cup of oats. So Ridge, can you please scoop out a nice big cup of oats for me? Don't worry if you make a little bit of a mess. You can also use this to just kind of scoop them in if you'd like. Nope, a whole cup. So we're gonna scoop an entire cup of oats. There we go. Even more, let's take this scoop. We're gonna take a big spoonful and we're gonna fill this up until it's all the way filled. All right, you think that's pretty good? Okay, mm -hmm. shake it right on in there. You can just pour it in. All right, next comes our brown sugar. We're gonna measure a cup of that. Remember how we measured the brown sugar before and we patted it right in? We're not gonna do that for this one. We're gonna do a loose cup and that's just because our apples are already sweet. We don't need to add a ton of sweetness to this too much and it's gonna overpower the flavor of the apples. So I'm gonna to try to get about one cup. I'm not gonna worry about filling up every little spot and I'm not gonna push it down hard. Yes? <laughs> you can't eat one of everything. You can wait until we're done and then we'll have, and then we'll have the whole thing all together. 
Okay, brown sugar is in. Now we measure out our gluten-free flour. You can absolutely use any type of flour you have. If you can't find any flour on the store shelves, you can even take a cup of oats and pulse it in your blender or in your food processor to be able to make your oat flour or whatever flour you're putting in. We have a bag of gluten-free here, so that's what we're going to use. Um, we're gonna take this, and this is gonna be a little bit difficult, Bridge, because this bag is kind of small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take one of my little pie plates here, and I'm gonna shake my flour right over top of this pie plate so I don't lose any of my flour. If you have a bowl, you could use that instead. I'm just taking nice big scoopfuls and I'm shaking my flour in. Once I have a super big mountain of flour up over the top, I'm gonna to scrape it off. Actually, I'm gonna have Ridge do that. We're gonna take our knife. Ridge, I want you to just sweep off the top. Beautiful, very nice. And we're gonna add that one cup of gluten-free measure for measure flour right in. Any of this extra flour can just go right in the bag. We are now going to take a fork and we're gonna start mixing this all together. I'm gonna have Ridge do that. Now you have two options here. We're going to be cutting in butter. And my butter's in the fridge, because in Arizona it is really, really hot right now. Um, my kitchen probably right now is like 82 or 83 degrees, so I didn't want to have the butter out melting. So in order to cut in butter, it needs to be very cold. You want to keep it in the fridge until the last possible moment. You also want to pre-cut your butter with a knife, and then you're going to cut it in to the recipe with either a pastry blender or a fork if you don't have one. So I'm gonna grab our butter while Ridge is getting going. This is one stick of butter that is cut up into little tiny squares. And as I said, it's right out of the fridge, so it's nice and cold. When you're adding in these pieces of butter, I recommend adding them in piece by piece. So Ridge, I'm gonna have you help me with this. We're gonna pick up our pieces and break them all up together. And once you have a couple in there, we're gonna coat it. Put them in. Yeah, they're yeah. too slippery. <laughs> they're too slippery. <laughs> Good thing this is only being eaten by us. All right. There you go, you wanna break them apart. And then after you add a couple in, coat them with flour. You want to do the coating instead? I want to use the You can use the fork. That's fine. I'm just going to So Ridge is going to start smashing them in there as I am putting them in like this. All right, Ridge. Go ahead and take that fork out for just a second for me. So I'm going to toss the butter in here. And what this is doing is coating these individual pieces of butter so they don't stick together from here on out. Now when you're using a fork as a pastry cutter, you're gonna wanna go in and smash those pieces of butter. And this takes a little bit of arm strength. One thing that you might need a grown up to help out with. But if you have a pastry cutter, this is great for kids. You need to stop eating the oats that are all over. I know you're hungry, but we're almost gonna eat apple crisp. So we're taking our pastry cutter and we're just pushing it right down, right into the flour on top of the butter. So Ridge, I'm gonna have you take over. No, you take over for me. Here, come here. <laughs> Good job. So push right down. I want you to push down with all your super strength, right on top of those pieces of butter. You can use two hands. Now lift up and do another piece. Good job. Don't worry about cutting in the butter too finely. It just has to kind of be well evenly dispersed. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing a whole lot of huge chunks. I'm gonna take a minute to just kind of show you. Now you'll see there's a bunch of butter that's stuck here. We just take our fingers right around and push it through. That's gonna make those little chunks of butter that we're looking for. Before you put it as your topping, before you put it as your topping, you are going to toss again, and you're going to add in, right on top,
We don't need the fork for this, Rich. We're gonna just use our hands and we're gonna just gently place our topping all over. And you can pat it in a little bit. If you see any large chunks of butter, kind of tuck them in. You wanna have a couple on top, some on the sides. Perfect. You're gonna clean up your edges. You can do that with a towel if you need to. And then you're gonna bake this for about 40 to 45 minutes at 350 degrees. It's gonna bake up into a beautiful golden brown and it can be left on the counter for a couple of days, but if you'd like to keep it longer, you can put it in the fridge or in the freezer and it reheats like a dream. Thank you so much for joining us in our kitchen today. Ridge and I will see you again later. Hopefully you all are staying safe out there and thanks again, bye.